Skirdalade, a military leader and ruler of the Illyrian state, b. c. 217-205. Skirdalade is an obscure historical figure that has been neglected by scholarship in general, and especially by Albanian scholars. A military leader and ruler of the Illyrian state during the years 217-205 b.c. He was one of the strong representative figures of the Illyrian royal family of Plurat, known as the dynasty of Agron I, who influenced both home and foreign affairs of the Illyrian state during the final three decades of the 3rd century b.c. Although first mentioned as leader in b.c. 230 in the battle against Epirus, Preceding events indicate that Skirdalade had already led the royal army during the rule of his brother, Agron. Historical sources too on the Illyrian dynasties of the second half of the 3rd century b.c. Present Agron and Tutor as kings of the Illyrian state. Later on, historians reserved the main role in the events of the wars between Illyria and Rome to King Gent III, whose reign closes the cycle of historical developments in the Illyrian kingdom leaving its place to a new chapter that unfolded under the new circumstances created after the Roman occupation. However, in this range of historical developments, the period between the end of the First Illyrian-Roman War, b. c. 229, and the time of the succession to power of King Gent is obscure. Agron appears in historical documents as King of the Illyrians in the year 2324. In the History, five of the Greek historian, Polybius, b. c. 200-120, we learn that Agron, king of the Illyrians, son of Plurat, had a much greater power in land and sea than the preceding kings of Illyria. The boundaries of his state included a wide area that stretched from Narona to Aeus, excluding only Dyrrhachium and Apollonia. During this period the Illyrian state represented not only an important military power, but also a diplomatic power that maintained the balance of powers in the Mediterranean. King Egron was a successor of former Illyrian kings that were part of the dynastic lineage of Glaucia and Monon. The historical sources of the time of Agron's reign make no mention of Skirdalade. He will only appear after Agron's death, i.e., during the short rule of Tutor. During the 1s Islami, Historia e Illyrive, Tirana 2008, pp. 86 133. 2 Polybius, Historii, 2 3. 4. Dion Cossi, Historia Romana, 47, 3. Claudi Eliani, Varia Historia, 2, 41. Joannis Zonari, Epitome Historiarum, 8, 19, c. Illeret e Illyria t Autoret Antique, Tirana 1965. 3. Polybius, Historii, Xvi, 8, 1, 6, 3, 1, XXXII 9, 4. Livy, A. B. Erbi Condita. XL, 42, 1, XLIV 23, 1, XLV 3, 1, C. Illyret t Illyria t Autoret Antique, page 44, 100. For Polybius, opposite 2, 3, 4, Illyret t Illyria. Page 44. 5 Idem, opposite, page 44. Luan Pert Sita. Skirdalade's tactical moves on the eve of the war against Rome. The campaign of the year 230 B, C, against Epirus. 6 Idem, page 44. 7 Polybius, opposite, 2 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, pp, 44 to 45. 8 Polybius, opposite, 2 6, 3. Reign of Agron, and more specifically in the year 231, when the alliance between Macedonia and Epirus was broken and a new alliance was established with Rome. The Macedonians sought help from Illyrian state 6. Epirus broke its alliance with Macedonia and joined forces with the Aetolians, a large Greek tribe in the south of Illyria and bordering with Macedonia. They had laid siege to the capital of Acarnania, Medion. In this situation the alliance of the Aetolians with Rome, which was at the time engaged in the war against Cartagena, shows clearly that Rome was preparing to become a superpower not only on the western side of the Adriatic, but also in the east. However, this political ambition of Rome infringed on the Illyrian boundaries. The situation created at this time emphasizes two main issues which are related first, to the intervention of the Illyrian state as an ally of Macedonia in the war against the Aetolians and second, to the reciprocal alliance for peace between these two states and against the enemies that aimed their occupation. 
Polybius 7 describes the Battle of B. C. 231 for the liberation of the city of Medion by the Illyrian army thus. At night time a hundred ships with five thousand Illyrians sailed towards Medion, approaching the city. The Aetolians, being overconfident in their victory were unconcerned and worryless. They even were so sure of their victory that they began to make calculations on the division of the booty. When night fell, masked well and in complete tranquility, the Illyrian fleet headed towards the port in the Ambracian Gulf. In complete conspiracy and without being heard, the Illyrian army spread out in fighting formation, ready to attack the Aetolian port. Then, the concentration of the attacking force would be on the weakest point of the enemy. The sudden and unexpected Illyrian attack was coordinated with the Medionians, who until then were shut within the walls of the city and would open the gates to attack the Aetolians. Thus the Aetolian troops were caught between the sudden attack of both Illyrian and Medionian troops. The strongest army in Greece, which had won against the Gauls and that for ten years had kept Macedonia under siege, was thus defeated. Who led the Illyrian army in the Battle of Medion? The ancient written sources do not mention the name of the leader in this battle. The fact that Agron was in his palace when he received the news of the victory of the Illyrian army over the Aetolians shows that the battle was not led by him. Polybius who writes in the year 230 B, C. 8, i.e., only one year later, that the leader of the Illyrian army was the brother of Agron, Skirdelade, leads us to suppose that the Battle of B, C. 231 was led by him. The final victory of the Illyrians over an army that had not known defeat placed the Skirdelade, military leader and ruler of the Illyrian state. Illyrian state almost on complete balance with Rome, representing thus an important power in the Adriatic. This in turn led to a military conflict for circa 60 years that is historically known as the Illyrian e Roman Wars. During the reign of Tutor IX and in the period following it, the name of Skirdelade becomes present in all aspects of the operation of the Illyrian state. He was a central figure that determined the course of developments not only in the military sphere, but also in the diplomatic one. The break of the inevitable war with Rome created the necessity for a defensive strategy mainly in relation to several regions that were constantly causing concerns to the Illyrian state. Skirdelade, who began with military maneuvers in Epirus, played the main role in the creation of this strategy. In B, C, 230 military troops began to move southwards. This time the principal objective was to defeat Epirus, the northern ally of the Aetolians and Achaeans. The scope was clear. The attack would keep the enemy under pressure and would determine the position of the Illyrians towards the Aetolians and Achaeans. The Illyrian troops descended in the vicinity of the capital of the Epirote League, Fionike, and headed towards the hilltop city. The enemy had left the troops off guard and was unconcerned, thus neglecting the defense of the city of Fionike, hence the Illyrian army was able to capture their army made of Gal mercenaries unprepared. Skirdelade with 5,000 troops passed the Strait of Antigonia and took position in front of the Epirote army that had arrived to help out the city of Fionike, and was situated somewhere near the modern river of Bistrica. Completely defeated, the Epirotes lost all hope and turned for help to their allies, the Aetolians and Achaeans. It did not take long for both armies, the Illyrian and the Epirote, joined by the Aetolians and Achaeans, to be confronting each other somewhere in the basin of Verg, in modern Girocastra. The battle did not actually take place due to a duel between Skirdelade and the commander of the troops of the enemy which determined the victory of the Illyrians. The Epirotes now defeated and in panic sent delegates to the royal palace of Tutor and along with the Acarnanians allied with the Illyrians, agreeing from now on to be against the Achaeans and Aetolians. The goal was reached, Epirus was snatched from the Aetolians and the alliance with the Acarnanians created a distant but direct boundary between the Greek leagues and the Illyrian state. In the spring of 22,910 the Illyrian fleet headed towards Kirkra, Corfu, and surrounded the city. The Corfiotes sent delegates to ask help from the Aetolians and Achaeans. The Achaean fleet comprising ten large warships rushed sailing towards Kirkra. After receiving seven ships from the Acarnanians the Illyrians headed towards the Achaeans and reached them at Paxos. The fast Illyrian ships determined the fate of this battle, as opposed to 9 idem, opposite, 2 4, 7 pp, 44-45, Dion Cossi, Historia Romana, 47, 
3. C. Illerecti Illyria T. Autoret Antique, Tirana 1965, page 371. 10. Polybius, Opsit, 2 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, Illerecti Illyria. Page 47. Luan Pert Sita. The Reorganization of the State. 11 Idem, 2 11, 2 and 12, 2, 3, Illerecti Illyria, page 48. 12 Idem, 2 16, 6, 7, Illerecti Illyria, page 52. The heavy 4 5 row ships of the Greeks. The Achaean fleet was defeated. The Illyrians took the city and stationed a garrison under the leadership of Demeter far there. The consequent victories of Skirdalade, a distinct strategist and general of the ancient history of the Illyrians, the expansion of borders, the economic stability, the strengthening and unification of the state, etc., placed the Illyrians in a position of supremacy towards other contemporaneous states. The fear of the neighbor and the increasing appetite of Rome for domination in the Mediterranean led to the conflict between the Illyrians and the Romans in the year 229 B.C. So great was the preoccupation of the Romans for the campaign against the Illyrians, and so aware they were of the actual weight of the Illyrians, that they mobilized in this campaign a fleet of 200 ships and an army of 20,000 infantry. The operation was placed under the command of two consuls that were on duty that year, Ne Fulvius and Aul Postum 11. Considering the situation that was created after the advance of Rome into Illyria, where now ruled Demeter Far, b. c. 228-218, as regent of Tutor, Skirdalade planned several diplomatic moves. With the assistance of Agelors, he secured peace with the Aetolians who agreed to fight the Romans, despite having previously been in friendly terms with them. Thus a large army under the joined leadership of Skirdalade and an Aetolian leader was created. Only five years later, after the appointment of Demeter Far as regent in Illyria, the latter began to express separatist tendencies towards Rome through several military actions that in one way, or another were openly contradictory to the interests of Rome. Demeter Far sent a delegation to Skirdalade asking from him friendship and military unity against Rome. In the year 220 B, C, Skirdalade and Demeter Far established an alliance, with the latter recognizing the former as king of the Illyrians. They sent their ships to free Kirkra, which Demetrius Far decided to achieve on his own as a sign penance towards Skirdalade. The return of Kirkra twelve into the possessions of Skirdalade and the reorganization of the state, that he carried out increased considerably the trust of the Illyrian citizens, but also of their neighbors. Following this stage, Skirdalade made a deal with the king of Macedonia, Philip, which was not received well by the Aetolians, who threatened to break the pact they had made with Skirdalade. The political and military situation began to deteriorate. A letter seized by chance by an Illyrian post guard while being sent from Philip to Demeter far read that Rome had lost the war against Hannibal. Far took the opportunity to advise the king that it would be best for the Macedonians to disengage from the war against the Aetolians, in order to turn against the Illyrian Skirdalade, a military leader and ruler of the Illyrian state. Instead, and then cross over to Italy. Found once again in front of the betrayal of Demeter Far and his ally, Philip, Skirdalade intensified the efforts for the unification of Illyria. He launched a land attack on Philip and occupied several towns among which the important city of Antipatria. The overcoming of internal difficulties deriving from disputes between small dynasties marked the end of the political, separatism that existed in Illyria. Skirdalade now had a well-organized army that comprised the infantry the naval fleet and the cavalry and from now on he appears in historical sources in association with his son, Plurat. During Skirdalade's project of reuniting Illyria, Rome maintained a position of indifference. The expansion of Skirdalade's power over the cities of Dasaritia represents the beginning of the military conflict with Macedonia. A major battle between the armies of Skirdalade and Philip took place near the city of Apollonia. During the winter of the year 217 B.C., the Macedonian king built a large fleet of 100 ships that included Illyrian slaves who had been kept in captivity 13. They were renowned for their masterly skills in this field and were used to emulate the Illyrian method of ship construction, the latter being widely valued for their speed and maneuvering capacity. In the early spring of B.C. 216, Philip set out with his ships and reached Apollonia, 
leaving a number of ships by the island of Cezanne near Orlan. The Apollonians asked help from Skirdelade who immediately took measures to protect the city. Philip's aggression against the Illyrians was a fatal move not only for Macedonians, but for all the peoples of the Balkans. The consequences of this war led to the collapse of the Macedonian state as well as a number of other states of the time, bringing major changes in the ethnic composition of the Balkans. In the newly created situation Skirdelade was found threatened by Macedonia and was forced to turn to Rome. From this moment he would operate as her ally for four decades. Taking advantage of the conflict between Macedonia and Rome, Skirdelade asked help from the latter and she sent five heavy ships, which were seen arriving by the ship that Philip had anchored at the island of Cezanne. Skirdelade had spread the infantry, cavalry and naval fleet out in formation. Everything was now ready to launch the attack on the position of Philip, who when noticing the approaching ships, was caught all of a sudden and ordered the army to retrieve. The retrieval occurred in a chaotic manner and the army fell in the hands of the Illyrian army. Philip's loss was great both in men and booty. The Illyrian army took a great number of his ships which were unable to leave the shore. After the Battle of Apollonia, Skirdelade managed to unite the Illyrian lands, with which the cities of Dasaretia joined willingly. The later history of the Illyrian state, the years 214-205 B.C is filled with events that are closely related to the intensive activity of Skirdelade who formed anti-Macedonian alliances, and fought wars that strengthened the Illyrian state. 13 Polybi, Vep. Sit. 2 110 9, 10 11, F 59. Luan Pertzita. After B, C, 2 10, Skirdelade appears along with his son, Plurat 14 throughout his diplomatic and military activity. In B, C, 205, Plurat, son of Skirdelade and father of King Gent would inherit the royal throne of the Illyrian state. King Plurat would remain loyal to Rome, however, his stance was not followed by his successor, Gent, who came to power in B, C. 180. Gent established direct relations with the kingdom of Dardania and that of Macedonia and prepared for war against Rome. For the first time in the history of the Illyrian state there is ample information on its military machinery. The new anti-Roman orientation in foreign policy was followed with a series of measures intended to strengthen the Illyrian state. Firstly, finances were increased through the issuing of a tax on all citizens and through state ownership of the mints of Lisus and Scutari 15, two cities where the king resided. Thus, on the eve of the war on Rome the state treasury, according to the inventory made by the Romans, had 27 pounds of gold, 19 pounds of silver, 120,000 Illyrian drachma and 13,000 Roman dinar. Also, Gent created a fleet of 270 ships, clearly showing in this way that the enemy against whom he was preparing for war was coming from across the Adriatic. An army of 15,000 men completed the military machine of the Illyrian state. 14 Livy, A. B. Erbi Condita, XXXI 28, 1, 34, 5, XXI 34, 11, XXXVII 7, 2, page 103. The destruction of Illyria on the other hand is presented in a ceremonial manner through a description of the triumph of the Praetor, Luke Anasai in Rome by Titus Livy, in a few days he subdued the Illyrian tribe, brave in land and sea, who relied for protection on their lands and fortifications, not only he captured the king, but also the entire royal family. The triumph had many military flags, other booty and belongings of the king, 27 pound of gold, 19 pound of silver, 13,000 dinars and 120,000 Illyrian silver coins. King Gent, his wife and children and his brother, Caravant as well as number of Illyrian elite were brought before Annex chariot. Anchez says that the sale of the booty secured millions of sesterces, not counting the gold and silver that were directly added to the public treasury. 15 S. Islami, Historia e Illyrive, pp. 222-237. Skirdelade, a military leader and ruler of the Illyrian state.